I found a way to combine my shop skills, my computer skills, and my OCD all into one project. This here is a Thine Baffle, which is a very compact and efficient form of dust collector. Uh, I didn't invent the design, obviously a guy named Thine did, but what I came up with are the 3D printed parts here and here that make the build a little bit easier. Uh, basically, whenever you want to tie a shop back hose to something else, it's always a pain in the ass because shop back hoses use their own standard sizes. They don't follow plumbing standards or anything like that, so you can't just use PVC pipe. And then on the ends of the hoses too, it's not even just a basic uh, tube you gotta fit, but a press to fit taper. So imagine that taper in your shop is just not a fun time. And then making it even worse, on this inlet hose here, we have to match the taper on this hose, plus the round shape of the bucket, plus the taper of the bucket, because the bottom of it is more narrow than the top. So all that is solved pretty nicely by just a few printed parts. The way this works is you've got your inlet hose with whatever attachment on the end that you want. And while you're picking up dirt and dust and all that stuff, it comes up the hose and enters the bucket at a tangent, where then it begins spinning around in a little vortex, around and around and around, and the heavier stuff gets pushed to the outside where it loses momentum and then eventually drops to the base of the bucket. Meanwhile, all the fine stuff in the airstream goes through the outlet and to the shop vac where it goes to the filter the way it normally would. The trick to what makes this actually work so well is the baffle on the inside of the bucket here. And this uh, basically separates the vortex up here from everything else in the base. So once something drops beneath this baffle, it stays down there and doesn't later get picked up and go back into the outlet and eventually to your shop vac filter. And as we'll see in a second, the uh, you know, differentiation point between fine and coarse dust, as far as this is concerned, is still very, very fine. So I figure the best way to show you how well this works is simply give you a sample of what it actually picks up. Eh, there's more in there. That's good enough. So here, we have one big old piece of threaded rod. <laughs> Obviously, that is pretty coarse. There's also some uh, wood chips from a hand plane, also pretty coarse. Scraps in the bucket when I was actually making the uh, baffle. Some uh, little bits of cut pipe. And that's all pretty coarse stuff. But then, there's also all of this, which is not coarse at all. I mean, I can tell here some of this is uh, MDF I was cutting a few days ago. There's a bunch of little red uh, flakes of paint from when I was running um, a needle scaler, cleaning off some scrap. Um, yeah, tons of little uh, bits of cut steel from the dry cut saw. Lots of uh, small bits of swarf, too. Now, it is important when you're uh, vacuuming up swarf from the drill press that you don't get anything too long. Uh, long swarf will clog the hose in your shop vac really, really easily, as you, you probably already know if you do a lot of steel drilling. Um, lucky that uh, you only get long swarf from a drill press if you have really sharp drill bits, and there's not a single sharp drill bit in the shop. So we are safe from that problem. But you can just see, you know, all this stuff and how fine it is, and that all got caught in the bucket. Meanwhile, nothing visible has gotten to the shop vac. Nothing. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of like really fine dust that still got its way to the filter, but like all this paint and stuff would have gotten in there too and clogged it up in a hurry. And it's still pulling with basically the same suction it had when I installed the thing. So this does a lot. So as for the parts and the build itself, obviously the base is a five gallon bucket. Uh, here I've got the Home Depot branded one, but probably any five gallon bucket is close enough to do. Particularly if it's made by Leaktite, which is the brand that makes the Home Depot one. I think if you do get this one specifically, it's like five bucks with the lid. It's, it's very affordable. Now, you'll need both the base and the lid, and the lid is where you put your outlet adapter. So print this guy off, maybe sand the inside a little bit to uh, you know get the fit right and clear off any burrs, and then you want to uh, transfer the holes and then cut them out. So one big hole in the middle, either the hole saw or cut with a utility knife, uh, and that'll be for the airflow, and then three smaller ones for the quarter, uh, quarter inch bolts. Now when you install the outlet, 
you want to put some sort of sealant around the flange. Uh, either a hot glue or a silicone caulk or whatever. Just something here to keep air from rushing in to the outlet hose while the vacuum's running. The only place you want air coming in is at the inlet, okay? Otherwise, you're losing suction. So, put some sort of sealant under the flange. Now, on mine here, I just have uh, nuts and washers. But in the files I'm uploading, I've actually got uh, a bigger plastic washer now. That will help spread the load out a little bit better and keep the lid from bending too much as you're dragging this thing around the shop with the hose, you know, dangling out of here. Now you might also need to cut a uh, clearance on this lid to make room for the inlet, okay? The inlet position should be just a little bit beneath the lip of the bucket. You know, maybe that's, I don't know, three eighths or half an inch beneath the lip. Um, as for specifically where it goes, just kind of place it up against there and see where it fits. It's been designed with a taper to fit, uh, you know, the radius at the top and the bottom. But uh, with this slip still intact here and this clearance cut, if you don't cut the tab all the way and you leave you know, about half of it, you can maintain the hook that's on that tab. So that hook can still engage on the lip of the bucket and give you a nice seal all the way around with the gasket on the lid. So try and do that if you can. As for the bucket, you've got a few components. Obviously, the baffle, a few support blocks holding it up, and then the inlet. So the baffle is interesting. And that's a circle with a slot around the edge on two thirds of it. You can see that in the light. Yeah. Okay, so I do forget the diameter of this offhand, but I'll look the dimension up and put it in the uh, YouTube description and on the uh, Thingiverse page. Basically, the diameter is important because that determines where this thing sits in the bucket, right? This bucket's tapered, so if you cut the diameter too small, it'll sit too low. So if in doubt, cut it larger and then kind of trim around the edge to make it fit better. Now you want this thing to sit, you know, a little bit below the inlet, maybe half an inch or so. It's not terribly crucial, but you probably don't want it down, you know, halfway in the bucket because that won't give you um, a very good cutoff line, right? And it'll also waste a lot of the bucket that could otherwise be used for holding dust. So have it somewhere below the inlet, just by a little bit. And the slot here, okay, the purpose of that is to give the, the dust a place to fall down, uh, but still provide you with the isolation of the dust you've caught versus the airstream. So the solid portion here goes right by the inlet. And that way the most turbulent portion of the air has something blocking it from picking dust back up. And as the dust spins around and around, on one of the rotations, it'll be low enough that it'll land beneath this part of the baffle, and then it just drops. Because <laughs> then it's gotten out of the airstream, it's lost all its momentum, and it falls to the bottom where it stays. Now, as for uh, the actual width of the slot, mine's about an inch and a quarter. I mean, I didn't really measure it, just kind of cut it by eye. Uh, I haven't tested anything else, but this does seem to work. Uh, if you do it too large, then obviously you're not going to be getting uh, enough uh, isolation between the lower and upper halves. And if you do it too thin, then you know big stuff like that threaded rod I had before won't be able to fall in there. Let's see. Now I've got uh, three blocks holding it up. One here, here, and on the tab. And they're also screwed in on the sides of the bucket. Those blocks are also in the files I'm uploading, so we just Use those or a scrap piece of plywood or whatever you want. Um, now, I had to use the tab to give this thing enough support to, you know, hold all the way out here. But a lot of people, when they're doing like bigger, beefier builds for like large workshops and stuff, and their, you know, dust collection barrel is like three feet around, they've got a big plywood uh, baffle separator. And then uh, that one usually does not have a tab on the end because they have it supported in the middle. I find it easier just to put the tab there and not bother with a center support. You can do, you know, either this or try center support if you think that might work better. Um, but obviously, <laughs> this one as it is, does work pretty well. Let's see. Uh, as for the material for the baffle, I used hardboard, uh, AKA Masonite, just cause I had it laying around. You know, <laughs> it's like maybe $4 for a two foot by four foot sheet, uh, eighth inch thick, so it's very affordable. But if you have something else laying around, you know, you can use that too. 
Uh, I would try to avoid stuff like OSB, which is a very coarse uh, surface, because that might uh, disturb the airflow quite a bit as it's coming around in that vortex. But luckily, hardboard has a nice and smooth surface. And with the way I designed this, uh, I guess it specifically does work best for thinner stuff. If you get to three quarter inch material, that might be a bit too thick, but eighth inch, quarter inch, probably even a half inch thick would be fine for this without it getting uh, you know, too high up and kind of messing with the uh, inlet here. Okay, now for the inlet. So putting this guy on does require uh, cutting a few more reliefs in your bucket, right? Leave the lip here intact, but you gotta cut these guys out, either with a utility knife or a chisel or whatever. And then that will let the inlet sit smooth against the bucket. Again, when you're installing this, do some sort of sealant, you know, caulk, uh, hot glue, whatever. Um, and to get the screw holes on here, I found the easiest way was to take a copy of the print, a piece of paper, and lay that on here, and then just poke it until you find where the holes are on this guy. Then you can transfer that to the bucket and then drill your holes. You also want to clean up each of the holes on the print, probably with a 764 drill bit, uh, and then use a six gauge screw. So those are the really tiny ones. You don't want to use a screw that's too big, otherwise you'll end up splitting your print. Um, and besides, these guys won't be under too much uh, stress, so you don't need to use a big old screw anyway. Uh, it will help if you do a more solid print and you give yourself several layers of, um, of print around the borders, right? So I use, I think, four layers around the perimeter. That way, when every hole gets printed, it leaves four layers of plastic around that. So I have room to actually drill it out and then still have the threads of the screw engage on plastic. If you only leave it with one or two layers, you're not leaving a lot for the threads to bite into and you might end up splitting your print. This guy here takes like six hours to print on high speed. It is a doozy, okay? So you wanna try to avoid breaking it. Let's see, once we got this guy uh, screwed in here, then you gotta cut that inlet slot, it's a little bit of a teardrop shape. You kind of just come in there with a utility knife or a X-Acto knife or whatever, and just clean it up until it fits well. And I think that's all for the assembly. One last thing I think is cool is the way I design these parts. Uh, basically, I use FreeCAD for all of them, which is open source software and has a Python API. So I actually designed them all with Python scripts, just like any other source code. So I printed this guy and found the flange here was too small for my liking and kind of makes the lid twerk around a lot. I was able to go back to my script and change the variable for the flange size. And there you go. <laughs> Obviously I've yet to install it. But I think this one here will be a lot better. Now the taper on this guy too. Oh my God. It was just barely too tight. But like after 15 minutes of sanding, as you can see, it still only goes down about halfway. Maybe you can't see, lighting's crap, Never mind. <laughs> Take my word for it, it only goes down about halfway. Because I measured this taper here with calipers and didn't leave any clearance for the print. And obviously printing is not a precise you know, machining operation. So when it came back to printing it a second time, I upped the variable by 30 thou, and boom, it's like a glove right off the print. So that is the beauty of parametric CAD. Now the source files for this are up on GitHub and the actual object files, for those of you who don't deal with source code, are up on Thingiverse. And I'm also gonna upload a few more that have uh, different amounts of tolerance in there and some test prints you can do to find out whether you should print it uh, either normal size, you know, tighter or looser, just depending on how your printer goes. Um, maybe save you from having to, you know, actually run the code yourself and update those fudge factors. Uh, I'll also note that the tapers here are meant for a mid-size shop back hose. That is the 1 and 7 8 inch hose. That's what I've got here in my shop. Uh, the larger ones, I think, are 2 and a half inch. I don't have one of those, but my neighbor does. He's actually asked me to make a dust collector for him. <laughs> so sometime next week or two, I'll have printed off his parts and found out the right clearances for them and put those on Thingiverse as well. So if you don't see the files there, uh, either bug me in the comments here on YouTube or on Thingiverse, and I probably just forgot to upload them. Now with all that said, I think we're done here. Enjoy.